What's up, y'all? We back at it. We checking out the uh, NL Central today. You know, it's been a little while since I previewed, you know, teams and divisions and whatnot. But I figured let's, you know, knock out the NL Central. The next one will knock out the NL West. You know, I'll give you a quick preview of the remaining 10 teams. We'll start out with the Cubs. Uh, you know, we got Marcus Stroman. The rotation, you know, a little bit older. But they're not really in contention mode this year. They're more in see what they got with the young guys and let the younger guys progress. But they brought in Marcus Stroman on a two- or three-year deal, I believe. They still got Kyle Hendricks. Uh, they brought in Wade Miley off waivers from the Reds. Uh, they got Caleb Killian, who's probably going to get some innings this year. But you've got three guys that are really just there to eat innings. Marcus Stroman's a good pitcher. You know, he's a little bit younger. Uh, I think he'll do good this year. He's done solid so far. Uh, Albert Azale, I think he's out with injury currently. But once he comes back, he'll, you know, give them innings. He's still coming into his, you know, prime. He's 27. Uh, Alec Mills, he's just kind of a guy. If they need innings, they'll turn to him. Justin Steele, he hasn't looked too bad to start the year so far. So I know he's given him a couple good starts. Uh, Stephen Brault, uh, you know, pitched with the Miners. The Miners, goodness. Pitched with the Pirates a few times. Uh, nothing too spectacular. Looks like another guy that just kind of give you innings. They got Drew Smiley. Again, just another innings guy. Uh, Jordan Wicks, you know, one of their higher prospects. Uh, probably look to develop him. Maybe he comes up, throws some innings this year. He comes up in a couple years. Uh, they've got Anderson Espinosa. You know, he's been a highly regarded prospect for what seems like forever. Uh, they got Steven Gonzalez, who's kind of past uh, prospect. At this point, you know, he's almost 30. So they're going to look for him to either get some innings this year or, you know, maybe he comes up and fills a bullpen role. But not too much in terms of prospects there. Uh, they got Chris Martin. That's a good reliever to have. They brought him in from, the, yeah, the Braves. Cody Hoyer, you know, came over from the White Sox last year in the Craig Kimbrell trade. I still personally am not a fan of it. And, you know, now the White Sox have already traded Kimbrell for A.J. Pollock, so they gave up Nick Madrigal and Cody Hoyer basically for A.J. Pollock. I would rather add Hoyer and Madrigal, but, you know, I'm not the GM. Uh, they got David Robertson, you know, kind of at the tail end of his career, 36, you know, just looking for him to hold down a bullpen spot for him this year. Uh, Eric Yardley, you know, threw a few innings last year. Uh, hasn't gotten too many innings in any particular year. I guess in the shortened season, that's quite a few. But looks like he's not too bad. Doesn't throw any particular hard, but doesn't really... Oh, well, no, it looks like he walks quite a few people. So it looks like he's just kind of there to eat up innings. Same still, Jesse Chavez, tail into his career. Uh, really, what they have is a lot of guys that are just there to eat up innings. Uh, Robert Zellman, former starter for the Mets. Looks like they got him in a bullpen role. Uh, Daniel Norris, former starter over the Tigers. Same thing. Uh, Brad Week, he's okay. Braylon Marquez, I don't know why they have him as a reliever. He's definitely a starter. At least that's what they're bringing up as currently. But, you know, he's still only 23. They're going to look for him to progress, obviously. Not too much else in terms of prospects. Like I said, the Cubs are, you know, they're several years away. Rowan Wick, he's a good reliever. Same as Jonathan Holder. This will probably be the back end of the bullpen along with Chris Martin and uh, Cody Hoyer once he gets healthy. Behind the plate, they still have to figure out what to do with Wilson Contreras. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I think he can definitely be there for the next few years or he could be traded by the deadline. You know, that's just a thing where the Cubs are the only ones that really know what they want to do because he is still only 29, but they could move him and definitely get a good amount of prospects back for him. Hasn't performed too well the last two seasons. Uh, he looks to be up and down kind of the last several seasons. You know, good rookie year, good sophomore year, kind of slumped in his third. Had a good bounce back fourth year, but he only played 105 games. And, you know, the shortened season, everyone kind of throws that out the window for the most part. And, yeah, he had over 20 home runs last year, but, you know, 237 average is not what you like. But he's a very good defender. Uh, behind him, they got Jan Gomes, just a good backup catcher to have. Uh, prospects, you know, they got Miguel Amaya, who is supposed to take over for Wilson Contreras. But, you know, maybe the Cubs haven't seen what they want from him. He hasn't taken that step forward that's necessary. 
So maybe that's why they're still hanging on to him. First base, you know, breakout guy from last year, Frank Schwindel. You know, definitely can rake. Uh, I think he's had a good season so far this year. Uh, Bryce Ball, you know, kind of a mid-tier prospect. I think he'll definitely come up and hit the ball very well probably next year or the year after. Second base, you know, alluded to it previously, Nick Madrigal. Uh, definitely the second baseman going forward. Very good contact guy. Uh, not going to give you too much in terms of home runs, but definitely a good doubles guy uh, when he's healthy. Uh, David Bodie. You know, cult hero, but kind of a, uh, just kind of a backup. Uh, James Triantos. Uh, looks like one of their top prospects. Uh, looks to be pretty good. You know, 19. Pretty all-around guy. Third base, another breakout guy. You know, kind of cooled off second half of the season. Patrick Wisdom hit almost 30 home runs. I uh, would definitely like to see him hit for a better average, but, you know, good power, good defender. Uh, Jonathan VR, you know, kind of a used to be kind of a do-it-all guy. Now he's kind of gotten older, has lost a step. Still, still a good player to have on your team. Uh, Christopher Morel, Chase Strumpf, uh, Reggie Preciado, you know, all all good prospects. You know, at different uh, phases of their progression. Chase Strumpf is probably a guy that looks to come up this year or next, maybe depending on what the Cubs do later this summer in terms of trades. Christopher Morel, maybe the same thing. Maybe he comes up next year. Uh, Preciado, probably they're going to wait a few years on him. He's only 18. I think he'll come up probably th three, four years down the road. Shortstop, they do have Nico Horner. You know, definitely a very good defender, as you see. Uh, you know, the bat definitely, I think, is making improvements. I think he'll be very good. Uh, I think he'll take a big step forward this year. They brought in Andrelton Andrelton Simmons. You know, so just another phenomenal defender to have. Uh, you know, good mentor for him. I think that'll be good. Uh, prospects, Christian Hernandez, you know, top prospect to have. It looks like, you know, phenomenal hitter, decent fielder. Uh, they drafted Ed Howard last year, who is actually from the Chicago area. But, or not last year, I think it was 2020. But he, you know, he's a good prospect, I think. Definitely in their top five. You know, we'll have to see how long they hold him down. Maybe he comes up at the end of this year, or maybe he comes up next year. Uh, definitely a guy to watch out for going forward, because I don't think he'll be a trade piece. I think they'll, I think they'll subtract big pieces and add more prospects before they, you know, subtract prospects for big pieces. I don't think they have the prospects necessary for it. Uh, left field, Ian Happ. You know, this is kind of his make or break year. Owen Cassie, you know, one of their top prospects. Brian Clint Fraser from the Yankees. See if he can put it all together. You know, give him a chance. Center field, they signed Seiya Suzuki, who has looked very good this year so far. Uh, he's, you know, looks like he's going to be an all-star maybe. Pico Armstrong, you know, one of their top prospects. Came over in the Javi Baez trade. Definitely a good piece to pick up. I thought that was, you know, very phenomenal value. Jason Hayward, he's just kind of played out his contract. Rafael Ortega. Made his, made his full season, really, debut last year. You know, never got above 66 games. Got a chance to play last year. Did really well, I think. I think he deserves more playing time. You know, he has 30, but, you know, nothing really to lose. Uh, Kevin Alcantara and Christian Franklin, you know, probably a few years away for both of them, but definitely good prospects. Right field, Brennan Davis, when healthy, I think is going to come up and be their right fielder. But until then, there's a waiting. Nelson Velasquez and Alexander Canario, you know, just good prospects to have. But I think Brendan Davis is the right fielder of the future. And we'll slide on over the Reds here. We'll start back at the pitching. Uh, they do have Luis Castillo, Tyler Molly, uh, Lucas Sims. Oh, there we go. Starting pitchers. Missed it by one. But same thing, Luis Castillo, Tyler Molly, uh, Nick Lodello, Mike Miner. And Hunter Green, I believe, are going to be their five going forward. They might go Vladimir Gutierrez. I think I've seen him make some starts over Mike Miner. But definitely a good rotation to have. Uh, I don't think Luis Castillo is healthy yet. That's why you see him technically in AAA. Looks like they have another top prospect in Chase Petty. Uh, Hunter Green has definitely performed very well this year so far. I don't think he's a 71. I think he's closer to 80 currently. 
these aren't the updated rosters. It's just the ones I'm using currently to preview the teams. Uh, Justin Dunn, uh, I think he still has, you know, something to prove. Came over from the Mariners. Now, he wasn't bad by any means, but I guess it's just not what the Mariners were looking for. I think he was part of the Jesse Winker trade. So, I think the Reds got a good pitcher there. They also got Brandon Williamson. You know, they got a lot of young starting pitchers. And most of them are, you know, close to the majors or in the majors outside of Chase Petty. In the bullpen, TJ Anton had a phenomenal year last year. Definitely, definitely found his role as a reliever, I think. He, so he's, you know, one to look forward to. Uh, would be the closer if it weren't for Lucas Sims. Maybe he does take over for Lucas Sims if he falters out of the gate. Uh, Luis Sessa is another uh, arm to watch, you know, former starter for the Yankees. You know, has flourished in a bullpen role. I think fit, uh, fits him very well. They have Justin Wilson, another former starter, Zach Godley. Uh, I've actually previewed the Reds. I'm doing a franchise on them. So really, if you would like to check out the Reds, uh, check out that series. Uh, I'm just going to kind of do a quick uh, once-over of everybody. Art Warren, Tony Centian, you know, younger guys that are in, in the bullpen, along with Miguel Figueroa. Uh, but I'm not going to go super in-depth, as I already did with uh, the franchise preview. Uh, you got Tyler Stevenson, catcher of the future, Matthew Nelson, or probably just Matthew Nelson. Uh, he's, you know, a good young prospect. Same with Daniel Veloen. Joey Votto, you know, free Joey Votto. You know, maybe they keep him for the rest of his career or they let him go chase a ring. Call Moran, just kind of a band-aid piece for currently. Uh, Jake Bowers, they're going to look and see if they can, you know, find something with him. Jonathan India, running rookie of the year, good hitter. I think he's going to take another step forward, be closer to the 300 average, maybe a few more home runs. Solano, uh, just a good contact hitter. Uh, prospects, you know, they got Leonardo Rivas and Tyler Callahan. I think both could get at bats this year, depending on trade situations. You know, third base, Moustakas and Drury, probably trade pieces for contenders. Reese Hines, maybe he makes his debut this year or probably next year. Uh, shortstop, they got Kyle Farmer, you know, just kind of holding it down until Ellie De La Cruz and Matt McClain are ready. You know, depending on how fast the Reds want to put them up, I think both of them could make an appearance this year or next. Uh, JT Riddle, kind of a band-aid piece. Jose Torres and uh, Jose Barreto, uh, just kind of younger guys that, you know, need to take a step forward to up their, you know, potential and up their standing within the organization. Left field, you know, they brought in Tommy Pham. They got Aristides Aquino, Jay Fraley, you know, three solid pieces to have. Center field, Nixon Zell and Albert Amora, you know, looking for uh, them to, you know, Regain some of what they were thought to be when they were prospects. They got Jay Allen, probably the center fielder of the future. You know, he's only 19, though, so they're going to let him progress for a couple of years. Right field, Tyler Naquin. He's a band aid, you know, currently until Austin Hendrick is ready to come up. But, you know, don't really want to gloss over the Reds too fast, but I have already made a full video uh, establishing their roster and what I think of their team. Now, the Brewers, you know, you got. Three of the best pitchers in baseball, Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Freddie Peralta. And then, you know, also have Adrian Hauser and Eric Lauer who are also very good. So I would say this is definitely the best rotation in baseball. You know, maybe a contest by someone else, but I don't think it's personally close. You know, I just think they have an overwhelming amount of talent. You know, they do have a couple young guys. They got Ethan Small. Uh, they brought in Jose Urania to, you know, eat some innings if injuries were to happen. Uh, but it looks like most of the young guys don't have the best of potential. So really they're relying on these five, which, you know, pretty good five to rely on. All of them are 29 and younger. The bullpen, obviously you've got Hader at the back. Devin Williams in front of him. You know, this two of the best relievers in the game. So, you know, they have phenomenal pitching. Uh, they got Brad Boxberger, Brent Suter. Justin Topa, Aaron Ashby, you know, a lot of a lot of good arm talent. And, you know, Ashby's young. He could still, you know, make starts for them down the line. But to get him innings currently, they're having him come out of the bullpen, which I think is a good plan. Uh, not too much else in terms of young uh, prospect. I mean, you've got, like, Jake Cousins. You know, he, he's got good potential, but 
you know, he's got to find a way to get some innings. It looks like he got a decent amount of innings last year. I think they did have an injury to somebody, though. I don't remember who. But maybe he comes up and gets some innings this year. Behind the plate, they got Omar Navarez and Victor Caratini. Uh, you know, they kind of complement each other pretty well, I think. Uh, Narvaez is a better uh, hitter and fielder, but Caratini, you know, he's solid in his own right. You know, definitely a good option to have when Ar Narvaez needs a day off. Uh, they got Jefferson Guerrero, a very good prospect to have. You know, probably one of the top prospects catching-wise uh, in the league. Uh, they brought in Pedro Severino, who I thought could definitely get a better contract. You know, didn't have a, a great season, but didn't have a bad season last year with Baltimore. You know, his three years with him, I thought he did, you know, fine. You know, he was regarded as a top prospect, you know, once upon a time ago. But he's definitely good, you know, for teams that need someone to hold innings until their, you know, prospects are ready or until they can find somebody else. Uh, Alex Jackson, former Braves prospect, you know, they traded him for Adam Duvall. The Marlins, you know, kind of got finessed, and it looks like now he's caught on with the Brewers. You know, so hopefully he looks to regain some of his uh, prospect status. But he's definitely going to have to learn how to hit the ball to do that. First base, they do have Rowdy Telez. You know, very good power bat, I think. In a full healthy season, I think he could probably hit 30 home runs and give you about a 3 or a 3, a 250 to 260 average. You know, just my personal opinion, not too much behind him. Second base, they do have Colton Wong, phenomenal fielder. And, you know, pretty solid hitter. Uh, they got Tyler Black, you know, just kind of waiting in the wings, waiting for his chance. Uh, Peterson, he's kind of a backup. Kesson Hira, you know, maybe they let him uh, platoon with Rowdy Telez. You know, he get, hits righties, and even though Hira hits righties better than lefties, maybe he, you know, learns how to hit lefties a little bit better. Uh, they got Felix Valerio, uh, you know, just kind of another prospect, kind of waiting in the wings. Uh, third base, they do have Luis Urias. When healthy, he is their starting third baseman. Until then, Michael Brousseau, uh, you know, former Rays playoff legend. Uh, he's going to, you know, hold the fort down. You know, good power. You know, just a good hitter against lefties. Can't hit righties as well, but definitely serviceable. Good fielder. And I'll say I believe he's a utility guy. So, you know, plays a lot of positions pretty well. Uh, not too much behind him. Shortstop, they brought in Willie Adamas from the Rays. And I think that was a phenomenal pickup. You know, I think he showed what he can do last year, and I think he'll take an even bigger step forward this year when given a full season in Milwaukee. I said, I think he came over like late May, early June last year. You know, I think he's definitely a very good hitter and a very good defender. And behind him, they do have Bryce Terang, and I think Eduardo Garcia and Jeremy Vargas are both better prospects than that. Uh, and even Freddy Zamora, I think they have a very good uh, standing behind him. Bryce Terang obviously being the best prospect. You know, more of an all-round guy. Left field, they're hoping Christian Yelich can regain, you know, some of his MVP form. They don't even need him to be, you know, the 44 home run, 330 average guy. They would most definitely take, like, I think this guy right here with maybe a few more home runs, you know, especially over, you know, the guy they got from him last year or the year prior. Now, I think he has definite bounce back potential. I think he's a very good hitter. You know, we just have to wait and see. Uh, they brought in Andrew McCutcheon. You know, definitely more of a DH at this time in his career. You know, noodle arms kind of playing in. And, you know, you'd like these averages with these home runs. So, really, you're looking for like 2017 Andrew McCutcheon. You know, you're not going to get the MVP Andrew McCutcheon, but you'll take 2017. Uh, Tyrone Taylor, just a good backup to have. Very good fielder, solid hitter, honestly. Just you know, not not enough spots in the outfield for all the outfielders they have. Uh, they also have David Dahl. You know, same thing. He's you know, definitely serviceable, but just not enough spots. Uh, they got Lorenzo Cain, who I think is you know, on the tail end of his career, still a phenomenal fielder. Uh, definitely isn't hitting as good as earlier in his career, but you know, he's getting older. Has lost a couple steps, but not. Not enough to retire now, so I think he'll still be serviceable. Serviceable, but I think he needs to move to left field soon. You know, I don't. I don't know if he needs to patrol center field. You know, for more years. Uh, they do have Sal Freelich and Garrett Mitchell behind him, and I think one of the two, probably Garrett Mitchell, will be the center fielder of the future. 
and Sal Freelick will probably move to a corner. Uh, both of them have good speed. I just think Garrett Mitchell's a better defender. Uh, Corey Ray, you know, thought he was going to be something coming out of Louisville. You know, and just never really amounted to, you know, I think he was a first-rounder, honestly, but he might have been a second-rounder. But I know he was a high draft pick. Just never really amounted to it. Uh, in right field, they do have Hunter Renfro, you know, cannon of an arm, extreme power bat, solid contact. You know, a very solid right fielder to have. You know, he is 30, but, you know, one of the better right fielders in the game. Uh, Joey Weimer, <clears throat> excuse me, is the guy coming up behind him. You know, same thing, cannon of an arm, solid power bat. I think he will be a solid re Renfro replacement when it, if they, you know, choose not to re-sign him or, you know, if he just kind of tails off in production. They've also got Hedbert Perez and Tristan Lutz, who I think will both be very good in, you know, due time. Tristan Lutz, you know, he's getting a little bit older. I think he'll probably come up in the next two years. Hedbert Perez, you know, he's got several years left, I think, but he will be very good. Uh, moving on to the Pirates, you know, they're, I don't want to say it, but they're kind of a dumpster fire of a team. Uh, you know, they do have Zach Thompson, Rollins Contreras, Jared Eikhoff, J.G. Brubaker, and... Uh, in the majors wise, you know, Mitch Keller, Jose Quintana, and Bryce Wilson. I think they do need to call up Quinn Priester. I think he's their top pitching prospect outside of Rowenzi Contreras, who I think is up currently. They also have Anthony Solomedo, who is probably a year or two away. I I don't I don't think Quintana needs to make starts for them. You know, even though he used to play for the White Sox, I just think he's kind of past his due date. Uh, they do have Adonis Medina as well, who at one time was a top prospect, who I definitely think could still give them that. Uh, you know, we touched on Bryce Wilson, former Braves top prospect, who I think can still be very good. He's still very young as well. Uh, in terms of other young guys, Max Kranick, you know, maybe he gives them something. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Michael Burrows, you know, he's probably a couple years away yet. But, you know, they do have young guys in Contreras and Solomedo, Priester, Mitch Keller, and Medina and Wilson, who I think will definitely give them a solid rotation going forward. It's just a matter of when they would like to call them up. Uh, bullpen, you know, back in, David Bednar has been very good this season. Looked like he was very good last season as well. You know, so just another one of the Padres giving up solid relievers. You know, bad in San Diego, good somewhere else. But, you know, it happens. They got Heath Henry, Chris Stratton, Aaron Fletcher, uh, Anthony Banda, Austin Bryce, and Dwayne Underwood is kind of their main go-to guys, and I guess Sam Howard, but he's kind of an inning eater guy. You know, not a whole lot in terms of bullpen guys. You know, they got a couple young guys here and there, but all in all, I mean, they got Gary De Los Santos, who they hope can take a step forward, but not too much else. Uh, behind the plate, they do have Roberto Perez, who is holding down the fort until Henry Davis is ready, you know, former number one pick uh, could come up this year probably will come up next year uh, hopefully no later than next year you know I think he's very good and I think will bring light to their franchise uh, they also have Andy Rodriguez you know he's probably a couple years away yet but definitely uh, another good catching prospect not quite as good as Henry Davis but still good uh, first base they've got Daniel Vogelbach you know mashes righties can't hit lefties but that's why they got Susugo. You know, so they'll probably platoon most of the season. They don't have too much behind them. Uh, they will look to, you know, find a first baseman of the future, which I think will probably probably be Michael Chavis. Once Nick Gonzalez comes up, I think he will play second base. And I think they will choose to move uh, Chavis over to first, you know, just to get his bat in the lineup. You know, kind of get his arm to uh, where it, you know, doesn't have to play in as much. Uh, you know, they got Hoy Park. You know, he's still okay. Uh, you know, just needs to get... I think he needs more at-bats, honestly, and I think he'll progress. Uh, Josh Van Meter, uh, same thing, honestly. I mean, he's getting a little bit older, but I think he's going to be solid. Same with uh, Marcano, uh, G G1 Bay, and Cole Tucker. You know, I know he's been in the league for a few years now, but as you see, he never really gotten a chance. You know, he hasn't hit the best, but I think he can still be solid. And I think they got a lot of talent, you know, in the middle infield right here, especially at second base. Third base, third base, uh, 
third baseman of the future, Cabrian Hayes. Uh, definitely needs more in terms of power, but a phenomenal defender. Uh, solid contact. I think he just needs to, you know, put some muscle on and hit some more uh, baseballs out of the park. And I think he'll be, you know, one of the better third basemen. Uh, shortstop, you know, not in the majors yet. He should be. Uh, they got O'Neill Cruz. So maybe he'll come up soon. Uh, I think he's kind of struggled at AAA this year. But um, I think he'll be very good. You know, six seven. He's a humongous shortstop. Maybe he stays there, maybe he doesn't. I think he's a good enough athlete to stay at short, but maybe they move him somewhere else. Uh, until he comes up, they got Kevin Newman holding it down. They've also got Bubba Chandler and Leo Repigueto, who I think will not be quite as good as Cruz, but I think will definitely draw some at-bats in the majors. Uh, they'll just have to find a spot to play. Left field, uh, they got Anthony Alford holding it down. Uh, you know, not really much behind him. Uh, Kenneth Smith and Jigba, his you know brother, plays wide receiver for Ohio State. So I, you know, obviously they're both solid athletes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think he can, you know, maybe show some more progression this year. I think he's a little more guarded in at least their organization than a D potential kind of guy. Center field, they do have Brian Reynolds. Curious to see if they keep him or trade him away. They would be very smart to hold on to him, though. He is one of the better outfielders in baseball. You know, good contact, good power, good fielder, good speed. Just a good, you know, good all-around baseball player. Uh, they got Travis Swaggerty, Lonnie White, and Matt Frazier, you know, waiting in the wings behind him. Uh, Swaggerty probably comes up this year and gets him at bats. Lonnie White probably a few years away. Matt Frazier probably a year or two away. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Right field, they got Ben Gamble. And behind him, they do have Connor Scott, who I believe came over from the Marlins. So, you know, that was a good get. I think he'll progress very nicely in the years coming forward. Uh, we'll get back over to the pitchers here. We'll move on to the Cardinals. And, you know, they do have Jack Flaherty, who I believe isn't currently healthy, but I'm not entirely sure. Adam Wainwright in his final season. Uh, you know, looking to see close to any milestones. You know, maybe he gets to 200 wins. That would be insane. You know, he's only 16 away, and as evidence last year, he can still, you know, get the job done. Uh, he's over 2,000 strikeouts. You know, not really close to any other milestones, so it's really just that 200 uh, win mark. You know, maybe if he gets close, he comes back another year, but I doubt it. Uh, Jordan Hicks, they finally made him a starter. Um, I think he'll be a good starter, but I'm curious to see how he does hold up over a full season of starting after coming back from Tommy John surgery. But I think given the chance, I think he'll do very good. Uh, Miles Michaelis, kind of an innings eater at this point in his career, you know, kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, going towards the end of it. Steven Matz, you know, former Mets top prospect. Uh, maybe he gives him some of that. It looks like he had a solid season last year. Uh, I'm not quite as high on him as other people are, but, you know, kind of evidenced by the these two seasons and 2017 but you know maybe he can give them a little bit of 2015 over a full season you know who knows uh dakota hudson kind of a you know just kind of a innings eater uh he'll probably make a lot more starts than he did last year probably look more for 2019 type year you know they got a lot of pitchers though so it's gonna be hard for everybody to get in it's michael mcgreevy you know maybe he gets some innings this year maybe he comes up next year matthew libertor you know, another top prospect. He came over from the Rays, and I believe the Tommy Pham trade, you know, a couple years ago. You know, he's, you know, one of their top pitching prospects. Uh, Brandon Waddell looks to get more innings. I know LJ Newsom, you know, he's still pretty young, but I think he'll be more a reliever going forward. Uh, Zach Thompson, Tim Kintz. You know, they got a lot of young pitchers. You know, just got to find innings for everybody. Uh, the bullpen, you know, they got Giovanni Gallegos and Genesis Cabrera and Alex Reyes, and I think that's why they are comfortable with finally making Jordan Hicks a starter and letting him, you know, get that chance because they do have a solid back end of the bullpen. And I think that's what, uh, you know, Dakota Hudson and, you know, Woodford and Libertor, if he comes up, Waddell, you know, if they come up, I think they will be, you know, they'll fill in the middle in, uh, middle innings, guys. Uh, that way, you know, you don't have to rely on, like, Blake Parker and Nick Whitgren. 
Ryan Helsley. You know, he's he's okay. He's younger, so you know maybe they keep him in there. Uh, Cody Whitley, you know, he's. I feel like he used to be a starter. No, maybe he was a starter in the minors. He's okay. You know, they got a lot of pitching options. You know, throughout the uh, organization. You know, whether it be young, old, good potential, innings eater, organizational depth, they have a lot of potential uh, for pitchers. Another guy in his last year, allegedly, Yadier Molina. You know, Cardinals legend, been there for 17 years. You know, came up all the way back in 2004, and he's been holding it down ever since. Uh, you know, he's two RBIs away from 1,000, so I'm sure he's already reached that this far into the season. Uh, hopefully he doesn't steal any more bases. And he's 29 home runs away from 200, so... I don't think he'll quite hit 200 home runs, but, you know, he could. But it'd be a career year, but I'd love to see it. You know, Yachty's just a guy that everybody loves. Uh, but they aren't sort of any, you know, prospects behind him. They do have Yvonne Herrera, who definitely, I think, will take over for Yachty quite nicely. Uh, originally, they thought it would be Andrew Kinsner, but he just wasn't quite what they thought he would be. But he's, you know, still a good backup to have. Uh, in terms of other prospects, you know, just kind of guys... Ali Sanchez, you know, he's okay. He's gotten some major league time. And, you know, by that I mean 13 hole at bats. But, you know, maybe he gets a few more this year. Maybe he takes a step forward and, you know, plays a part in their uh, plans going forward. Paul Goldschmidt, you know, still holding it down at first base, one of the better first basemen in the league. Another Cardinals legend, Albert Pujols, makes, uh, makes his way back to St. Louis for his final year. You know, that made me happy to see. And I think he'll have a good season. Uh, you know, he's only 21 home runs away from 700. I think that is definitely attainable this year. You know, I definitely think he has 21 left in the bat. I think he's already hit a few this year, so you know he's already closing in. I'd like him to see get, uh, see him get back over a 300 career average. You know, it's kind of taken a nosedive these last you know five six years here. Uh, Juan Yepes, uh, Luke and Baker. You know, they're both you know waiting in the wings. You know, for Albert to retire. Uh, waiting to see what they do with Paul Goldschmidt. You know, as he gets older, you know, he hasn't really slowed down any. But, you know, they do have options behind him. Second base, you know, Tommy Edmond. Uh, definitely been good atop the lineup. You know, good hitter, good fielder. Uh, you know, just a good guy to have atop the lineup and at second base. Uh, behind him, they do have Nolan Gorman, who moved over from third because there's another Nolan. Uh, you know, obviously, we would be talking about Nolan Arenado. You know, top three, four third basemen in the game, depending on who you ask. You know, one of the best defenders, you know, one of the best hitters. Uh, but Nolan Gorman will definitely be solid when he does get the chance. I think he'll get some at bats this year. I think he's knocking on the door. Uh, they do have Jordan Walker. Uh, you know, just a massive dude, 6'5", 220. He's only 19. <clears throat> Phenomenal power bat. Uh, probably a couple years away yet. But, you know, he's kind of blocked at first and third with Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. So I don't know where they're going to find the bats for him, you know, but they do have the DH now. So, you know, we'll just have to see, but he's at least two years away. I think shortstop, they do have Edmundo Sosa and Paul DeYoung. Uh, you know, they're kind of both battling it out for, uh, starts, you know, you just want one to kind of take a stranglehold of it. But if no one ever does, they do have Mason Wynn. He's a top prospect with a can of an arm. You know, former two-way player. I think he's kind of settled in to just playing shortstop now. They've also got Anderson Tejada. You know, another good uh, prospect. You know, so they've got two guys who could take over the job if neither uh, Sosa or DeYoung, you know, take a hold of it. Uh, left field, you know, their outfield is said they got Taylor O'Neill. You know, he came on real strong at the end of last year. You know, very good power bat, good hitter all around, phenomenal defender, you know, phenomenal speed. Uh, they have Corey Dickerson kind of as like that backup outfielder. I think he uh, platoons at DH with our pools, but hasn't really done too well this year. Center field, you know, they got Harrison Bader, one of the best defensive center fielders. Uh, they just want him to put it together with the bat, and I think he'd be, you know, top five center fielder in the game. Uh, they do have Joshua Baez. You know, he looks to be... You know, in the same mold of Bader and O'Neill and Dylan Carlson. You know, so if one of these guys slips up in the next few years, you know, they do have Joshua Baez to uh, take their place. Right field, you know, Dylan Carlson, you know, solid contact hitter against especially lefties. You know, decent power bat, another phenomenal defender. 
probably the best all around defensive uh, outfield in the game. You know, I don't think anyone could really argue with that with O'Neill, Bader, and Dylan Carlson. You know, they're all very, very good defenders. Uh, they also have Lars Newbar, who, you know, played a decent amount last year, who's also a very good defender. Uh, just couldn't really hit enough to lock down an everyday job. Uh, but he's not a bad hitter, so. But, uh, you know, that'll do it for the NL Central. I think the teams to beat will probably be the Brewers and the Cardinals. Uh, I see the Brewers just off their pitching alone, probably edging out the Cardinals. You know, I just don't think the Cardinals have quite enough pitching. You know, I mean, they have a lot of younger guys, but they've also got a lot of older guys and guys who have failed to stay healthy so far in their careers. You know, you've got Adam Wade in his final year. Uh, Flaherty's, you know, struggled to stay healthy in his career outside of the one year. Uh, Jordan Hicks, you know, he missed an entire year, you know, didn't pitch very much last year, you know, and it's his first year as a starter. Wainwright's 40. You know, you got guys that have been inconsistent, whereas, you know, the Brewers have three Cy Young contenders. And if their offense clicks, you know, they are almost an unbeatable team. But, you know, the Brewers and Cardinals, I think, will be battling for the top spot in the NL Central. I think the Cubs will probably come in third with the Reds not too far behind them. And I think the Pirates will probably be the fifth place team. Honestly, I think the Pirates are probably one of the worst teams in baseball. You know, they have a lot of prospects, but some of them are farther away than others. And the Pirates are used to call most of them up. So until they do, they will continue to be bad. Uh, the Reds, you know, they're starting to call more of their prospects up. You know, they recognize that they are going into a rebuild after a couple years of contending. But they're doing a very good job of calling the young guys up, giving them a chance, and letting them prove themselves. And the Cubs are kind of that in-between period where they've got a little bit of big league talent and they've got a few prospects, but their prospect, prospects aren't ready. So they've got bridge guys and their uh, remaining talent or talent they brought in in terms of Simmons and Stroman. So I think they're just enough to go ahead of the Reds. You know, they're young guys. They're going to have to go through growing pains. But I think they both have good outlooks going forward. The Pirates do as well. They just won't call their young guys up. But they could towards the end of the season. And, you know, but those three teams will be battling for third through fifth. The Brewers and Cardinals will be battling for first and second. Maybe one of them sneaks away with a wild card. But the NL East is loaded, and so is the NL West. So I think there will only be one team out of the NL Central to make the playoffs. But, you know, as I alluded, there's Cy Young contenders from the Brewers. You know, if Flaherty comes back healthy, you know, he could uh, contend if he has a full healthy season. Uh, MVP runners, unless Yelich regames form or Nolan Arenado gives you, you know, some of his prime Colorado Rocky years, which I don't think he will, honestly. You know, there's probably not an MVP in the NL Central. They do obviously have all-stars. You know, most most teams have at least one all-star on their team. You know, some teams have several. But, yeah, I think that's how it's going to play out. You know, if you think differently, let me know. But check out my other videos. You know, I've got into everything except for the NL West. But I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.